Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Let's pray to the Lord for that. When he resurrected from the cross, from the grave. We all know the accomplishment from the cross. When he was on the cross. What about when he resurrected from the grave? Let's go to John. I want to read an account of his resurrection. Then we go to the four points I will be giving this afternoon for a few minutes the time is well spent verse 1 and now on the first day of the week Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb then she ran and came to Simon Peter Mary did not enter the tomb she just saw that the big stone that they used to seal, to secure the tomb has been rolled away. So she assumed that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ has been taken away. So she ran and came to Peter Simon and to the disciple whom Jesus loved. We talked about that Friday. Who is that? John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Love is John. Came to both of them and told them that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ has been taken. Then they have taken away the blood and he went not. So Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. They believed what Mary told them. So they both ran together. They both started running like who have taken the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then the Bible makes us understand that John outran Peter. Amen. He outran Peter and they got to the tomb. John got to the tomb first. But John was not as bold as Peter. So John got there first. He saw that the stone had been removed. So he, couldn't, he didn't go in. He was looking, but he did not go in. And then, what happened? Peter got there. Peter was the bold one. Amen. So John looked at it. He saw the living cloth, and he saw some stuff there. So John and Peter came, and he saw it, and Peter went inside the tomb. He went inside the tomb. But to, uh, to their shocking, they saw something. Let me read this. And he stood down and looked in, saw the linen clothes lying there. Please pay attention to that. The linen clothes, after Jesus was crucified, they took his body and they wrapped it with what? Linen clothes. They wrapped it with linen clothes and the linen clothes was still there. But the body was not in the linen clothes. The body was not there. But the linen clothes was still wrapped. As if there's body in the linen clothes. But the body was not there. Also his handkerchief, the handkerchief that was on his head also was tied. But it was not lined up with the body. Are you with me? Are you following me? So the, 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 the tie, the handkerchief was not parallel, was not the same position with the linen clothes. The handkerchief was somewhere else. 
But the handkerchief also was tied. The cloth was still in a full form. So Jesus' body does not as if Jesus unwrapped. I used to say to me, unwrap. In order for him to leave the linen clothes, he had to unwrap it. But the linen clothes was not unwrapped. The end time was not on time. Everything was in the same form. As if there's a body there. But the body was not there. I said the body was not there. So when they saw that, that was their proof that Jesus had been resurrected. At first, they didn't believe he had been resurrected. But when they saw those signs, this is a proof that the body had been resurrected. What does that mean? That means Jesus now has a glorious body. Because there's no way a human body would disappear from a living clothes. There's no way a human head would disappear from the, one, from the handkerchief. Because the Bible makes us understand that Jesus' spirit was quickened. There were two forms of resurrection. The first form of resurrection was the spirit. His spirit was quickened. The second form, his body was risen. Without the spirit being quickened, the body will not resurrect. What do I mean by quickened? That means Jesus' spirit was quickened to another life, to eternal life, to glorious life. Then the spirit that been quickened now went to the body and quickened the body. So Jesus' body, no longer a physical body, Jesus' body was a glorious body. So his body actually disappeared from the linen cloth and from the head. And the Bible said that the disciple they saw this and they believed that Jesus had been resurrected. Now I want to give you very quick accomplishment of Christ's resurrection. Number one. Jesus restore us to communion with the spiritual life of God. If Jesus didn't restore us, we cannot fellowship with God. There was a barrier between God and within man. That's why in the Old Testament, they have to do the atonement every year, once a year. What they were doing, they were doing what we call atonement, amendment, forgiveness of sin. Because man cannot approach God because of what we have done. So, but Jesus came to restore communion with God. What do I mean by that? Fellowship with God. In the Old Testament, the priest is the only one that can approach God at the end of the year and go into the, the, the only of holiness. But what Jesus did, because his spirit was quickened, and anyone in Christ Jesus, if you believe Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that means you cannot fellowship with Jesus. You cannot fellowship directly with God. So number one, he restored us to communion with the Father, to the spiritual life of God. Because the Bible makes us understand that God is spirit. And those that worship him, they worship in what? In spirit and in truth. Without Jesus resurrected from the dead, there's no fellowship. There's no communion with God. So in resurrection, move the barrier between God and between man. So everyone that is in Christ Jesus can approach God. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? We can fellowship with God. Because with spirit, that's what we use to fellowship. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 
2 Corinthians 5.18. It says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So his resurrection make this possible. His resurrection make the fellowship with God. You don't need to go to a priest to get to God. You don't need to go to a pastor to get to God. You don't need to go to an apostle to get to God. You have direct connection. You can go to God on your own. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, approach his glory. Hallelujah. You can go 24-7. God does not take a nap. God does not sleep. He lives forever. That's why David said, I lift up my hand to the hills. Hallelujah. I get help from God. He never sleep. He never slumber. He is alive. He is away forever and ever and ever. Glory to God. At midnight, you can go to God. 1 a.m., you can go to God. 6 a.m., you can go to God. The barrier has been moved. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. He has moved the barrier between God and man. Hallelujah. This morning, before I came here, I went to him. In the afternoon, I'm going to go to him. In the evening, I'm going to go to him. When you are sleeping, I'm talking to him. Because the veil has been moved. Fellowship with God. When we fellowship with God, we fellowship spirit to spirit. This accomplishment was so powerful. Because without Jesus, first of all, quicken, God quicken his spirit. And move the enmity between God and man. We cannot approach God directly. We have to go through another man. We have to go through the priest. Amen. You don't need to come to me. Go direct. There's a direct connection. Someone say amen. Come on. Someone say amen. Come on. Somebody say amen. Let's go to First John 1 3. John is telling us here that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have what? Fellowship with us. Listen to this. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. A true fellowship. It's okay, we can fellowship. That's what I call horizontal fellowship. But vertical fellowship is between God and man. Sometimes when I fellowship with God, I come, I relate to the saint. When you fellowship, you come in with God. You speak to him. He reply you. He speak back to you. You deliver it to the saint. But guess what? You don't need to believe it. If you don't believe what I say, you can go there direct. Does that make sense? Now, let's go to number two. I want to move it quick. Number two. Achievement of Christ's resurrection. Very powerful. Number two. Implanted in our mother body. The resurrection life. Which will be fully manifested. When Christ returned for his church. At the point. Our body will become glorified. Just like his body. Right now, our body cannot be glorified. But that time is coming. And I truly believe that time is coming. That we will receive the full accomplishment of what Christ has done on the cross. What do I mean by glorifying body? It means I can walk through the wall. It means I can go to Africa without going by plane. A glorified body, you think about it and it happens. That's why Jesus had that body. He's the first one that had that body. It disappeared from the linen clothes. 
without unwrapped the linen cloth. His head disappeared without untie the linen cloth. Are you hearing me? The glorified body, if I want to be in Africa now, I just have to think it. You will be there. The glorified body has no pain, no sickness, no disease, no high blood pressure, no cancer. It's a pure body. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glorified body. Have you ever thought about, about this? When Jesus came, will come, to rapture the church. How can you cut up with him? The Bible said we will cut up with him. In other words, Jesus is not coming on earth. Jesus will be in the sky. And his church, those that are dead, will go first. And the church, human, will join them. How can you join them? The only way you can join them when Jesus comes, our body will turn to a glorified body. Our body will do, will turn, will change. Let me ask you, can you fly? <laughs> Hello? Can you fly? No, you can't fly now. But the time is coming. When Jesus is on the sky, your body is going to change. You're going to receive the same body that Jesus received during resurrection. A glorified body. You're going to fly and meet him on earth in heaven. Hallelujah. It's already in us. Church, listen to me. It's already there. Jesus is alive. This is one of the achievements that he received for us. You have that body in you. It's already implanted, but it's not activated. It's there in your body. Maybe you don't believe it. I believe it. It's in my body. It's in my body. It's implanted. The day I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So I'm ready when Jesus is ready. When he's on the sky, I'm going to cut up with him. Because this body is going to change. He has implanted that in us. I will show you. Let's go to Romans 8. You have it. It's not activated. But when Jesus comes, your body will be quickened. Your spirit will be quickened. You begin to fly. Come on, do you believe that, church? This is the gospel. Let's go to Romans 8, 11. He said, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, let me ask you, the spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, does it dwell inside of you? And I like the scripture say, if is conditional. If that's why it's good to know all these things. I believe it. It has been implanted inside of me, inside of you. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the glorified body, the spirit is there, but it's not yet activated. Because God is a God of purpose. It's not time for that yet. But when that time comes, we're going to cut up with him in heaven. Hallelujah. Those that don't know Jesus will stay, but we are gone. I'm ready to go and be with the Lord. And celebrate because the spirit is there. And that's what the Bible is saying. If the spirit of him, that the spirit of God, that raised Jesus Christ, from the dead. I know when you talk about the dead, resurrection is not one-fold. Resurrection is two-fold. It's two-fold. His body, his spirit, first of all, was resurrected. That's why people always say, Jesus went to hell. Did he went to hell? Come on, talk to me, church. <laughs> he 
went there. He conquered. The significance of that means that Jesus conquered second death. He conquered what? Second death. You know what I mean? Eternal death. He conquered it. That's why the Bible says the grave cannot hold him. Death cannot hold him. The grave cannot hold him. He is the resurrection and the life. He conquered death. Not the first death, but the second death. He conquered both. That's why the Bible says his spirit was what? Quickened. The Bible says he made his spirit alive. He made what? His spirit alive. That means Jesus went through second death. Did you hear me? He made his spirit alive. If the spirit did not die, why did he need to make it alive? There's no reason. It's because he went to hell. And God quickened his spirit. The first resurrection was spiritual resurrection. His spirit was alive. Then the Bible says he went to what? To prison. You know that, right? He went to prison to do what? To preach to who? What spirit? Yes, the fallen angels. The fallen angels that don't want him to come. He didn't preach to them to win them to God. He went there to make an announcement. Hallelujah. He went there to make an announcement. In other words, he was telling them, you try to kill me. You try for me not to leave. You try for me not to come. But I have a news for you. I am alive. I am alive forever and ever and ever and ever. He went there to make an announcement. So tell him, look at me, I am alive. You think you can get me? You think you can kill me and kill my spirit? <laughs> my spirit is alive. Why? Because I am the resurrection and the life. You cannot kill life. Life lives forever. Jesus is the source of life. Are you hearing me, church? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He went to tell them, look at me. I am alive. You, I am alive forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come and say, Jesus is alive. Is alive forever and ever and ever. The death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. The Bible says it is impossible. It is impossible for him to stay there more than three days. It is impossible. He got to come back alive. Jesus faced death, second death. He conquered second death. If you are in Christ, you will never experience second death. No, you will not. You will not. Listen to me. Jesus is the only king that I know that allow his subject to reign with him. No, you didn't get that. No, you didn't get that. You, you didn't get that. He's the only king. Oh, we're going there. He's the only king. That want his subject, people to reign with him. Guess what? We're gonna reign with him. Then that was a miracle. His spirit was quickened, and his spirit, after he was quickened, he preached to the spirit that don't want him to come, that want to pollute women for so cannot come. But they didn't understand the revelation. God said the seed of a woman, not a man. The seed of a woman. I said to myself, do women carry seed? In other words, God is saying, I don't need no man obligation. I don't need anybody obligation. Jesus coming is unconditional. Either you like it or not, it's going to come. Either Satan like it or not, it's going to come. You cannot stop it. 
His spirit was quickened. Then the spirit went where? To the throne. That's why that miracle was happening. That's why it was possible. When spirit quickened, this is false. That tasted eternal life. This is false. Not that he, he, he resurrected and he came to an, this life. He resurrected and went into another life. He tasted everything. Everything. So that spirit that is quickened, the spirit that is alive, after he preached, then he went into the body and quickened the body. And that body became what? Glorious body. And the same thing will happen to us when the church, when Jesus showed up on earth, and in heaven, our body will change. Those that in part and we cut off with him. Are you with me? Number three, almost finished. Number three. The achievements of Christ's resurrection return us to eternity in the presence of God. This is the consummation of Christ's perfect work. We don't have that now. But when we go into the presence of God, we will experience the consummation of Christ's perfect work on the cross and his resurrection. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4 17. Then we who are alive who remain shall cut up together with them in the clouds. That's the question I ask you. How can you cut up with them in the clouds without glorifying God? It's impossible. It's impossible. So that glorified body has already been implanted in us. But it's not activated yet. But when Jesus show up in the clouds, it will be activated. It will be quickened. And it will change. The spirit of him. Remember, the body cannot change by itself. It was the spirit that changed the body. It was the spirit of Jesus that been what? Quickened. Come alive. Change his body in the tomb. That's why you don't need to untie the wrap to come out. Oh, that's why you don't need to untie the head tie to come out. That was the proof of resurrection. Because they saw it. Ah! The little cloth is still folded. I see someone is there. But nobody was there. The glorified body, the spirit, changed the body. Remember, oh God, I don't have time. Remember, body have to die first. And body has to walk, then resurrect it. Jesus did all of that. Hallelujah. That's number three. And I'll finish number four. I love number four. When I begin to preach it, I'll begin to dance. I'm serious. I'm not joking. Let's go quick. To Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. I'm going to shout. If you want to shout with me, it's okay. And if it's not, it's okay too. Go to Ephesians 2 5. He said, Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. 
by grace you are being saved. And raise us together. <laughs> what? Raise us together. So when Jesus resurrected, we too are resurrected. But it's not yet activated. Are you still with me? It's implanted. But not yet what? Activated. It raised us together. And make us sit together. Not on her. Not in your house. Not in your office. In middle what? Sit together. In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are seated together. But before we can see it, he raises us up. Together. Together. And made us to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There's a saying that we say that Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father. You know what that means? That represents and it means that Jesus has accomplished every work that is needed for our salvation, that is needed for our glorification, that is needed for us to sit at the right hand of the Father. He finished all the work. I will explain. In the, in the Levitical priesthood, a priest does not sit. A priest cannot sit because their work is perpetual. It's what? Perpetual. That's why every year they have to kill a goat and a ram and tend it. They don't sit. They do every year. It's perpetual. But when Jesus died, he died once and for all. He resurrected once and for us. And Jesus is our high priest. For him to be sitting. Oh, you didn't hear me. For Jesus to be sitting. That means the work is done. Jesus has done everything. He has paid the price for your salvation. He has paid the price for your glorification. He has paid the price for you to see it at the right hand of God. His work is done. He paid the price. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him glory. He has paid the price. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! The work is done. Hey, please don't sit down. The work. Amen. Every year, the priests have to do a torment. But this high priest, this man called Jesus, he didn't go there twice. He didn't die twice. He didn't resurrect twice. He did it one time. And the work is done. That's why he's sitting. When you sit, you are chilling. <laughs> if the work is not done, you can sit. Uh. But Jesus, that, that's why Good Friday, Jesus said, it is finished. I have paid the price. I have overcome the grave. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody exalt his name. He paid the price. Oh, he paid the price that is needed. Now, the point is, he raised us together and he made us to sit together in heavenly places. Number four, I feel like dancing. I feel like jumping. To know 
that his resurrection means all of these things. We are implanted with a glorified spirit that will be quickened, that will be activated when he comes. That's what will change our body. To change our body. We too, we experience what Jesus experienced. Remember when he appeared to the disciples? Did he open the door? Hello? You don't need the key to enter. He just appeared. Glorify man. Now, number four. He seated us in heavenly places to rule with Christ. Have you seen any king or any religion that the head of the religion as a king will allow somebody else to sit together with him and they rule together? They sit together. We are ruling together. That's the first king I've ever seen. Kings, they don't like anybody, don't rule with them. They rule by themselves. They make decisions by themselves. But this King Jesus, hallelujah, if I were you, I would be dancing. This King Jesus, allow us, glory to God. And I like it. The Bible says, He made us. He made us. Don't worry, you don't have to say no, you will make you sit. As long as you are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, you don't have a choice. If you don't want to sin, you will sin by force. Because the Spirit of God inside of you will make you sin. It will make you rule. In the name of Jesus. I don't know about you. I'm excited. I don't know about you. I am excited for what Christ has done. Yes. 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 Imagine. Rule together. Man, the devil is in trouble. Because my ruling with him is going to be hot off. Sit together. Raise us together. The raising us together is the implanted, glorifying body, glorifying spirit. It's not yet activated, but will be activated in time to come. So that is sitting, sitting down represents the fact that he has accomplished his work. Because in the this Leviticus priesthood, they don't sit. They are working. When you sit, that means the work. Have been completed. Have been completed. Can I give one more scripture? Then I will stop. Let's go to Hebrews 6 and I will stop there. I don't know. I'm so excited. Resurrection life. Resurrection what? Life. So when my time comes, I pass away. Really, I'm moving, I'm relocating. Hallelujah. I don't have time, I can stop it some more. Amen. I'm relocating. From this body, relocating to a bigger body, to a glorious house. You know what Jesus said? He told the disciple, I would have told you, but I'm going. The reason why I'm going is not because I'm going to leave you alone by yourself. Holy Spirit will stay with you, but I am going to prepare a place for you. 
in my father's place there are many mansions in my father's place hallelujah i told my wife the other day when we get to heaven we're not sharing no mansion i have my own mansion glory you can come visit no come visit oh glory to god if you don't come i will come visit you but we are not sharing mansion. I'm here to tell you because my father in heaven, he got it like that. He has many mansions. Oh, I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. He got many mansions. Hallelujah. We are not sharing any mansion. And my son, you go get your home mansion. My daughter, you go get your home mansion. So, you don't get your home mansion. So, what we are doing, you relocate from this little body. That body with pain. That body with sickness. That body with infirmity. And go in to another body. Where there's no sickness. Where there's no disease. Where there's no infirmity. Hallelujah. Come on, church of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, you're going to sit with him. And rule with him. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to rule with him. Whether you like it or not. Can I stop? Whether you like it or not. Why do I say that? In heaven, it's only one will. In heaven, Pastor, it's only one will. On earth, we have many wills. Many agenda. But in heaven... It's only one will. If Father says sit, you sit. If Father says get up, you get up. You don't ask questions. You sit up. And that's what the Bible says. It will make us. It made us sit with him. Either you like it or not. You are crying, Jesus. You're going to sit. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say I'm sitting. I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father. I'm not sitting to chill. I'm sitting to rule. Hallelujah. I said to myself, he didn't sit at the left hand. He's sitting at what? The right hand. Right hand in the hand of authority. Right hand in the hand of power. Right hand in the hand of dominion. Right hand in the hand of power, dominion, authority. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Yes. Be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love it. See a king that allows his subject, someone that is lesser than him, to sit together with him and to rule. That's the key point to rule. We can sit together and watch and see what he's doing. But we are ruling. Do you believe that? Are you ready to rule? Come on, I'm not ready to rule. I'm going to pray for you that the spirit of rulership begin to manifest in you now. Not until you get to heaven. The spirit of rulership. How to rule. That you begin to rule your home correctly. There's a difference between leading and ruling. Hello? I can lead, get your opinion, and based on your opinion, I make decisions. But ruling, I don't need to hear your opinion. I don't need to hear your idea. I don't need to hear what you think. This is what we're doing. I 
and it is what it is. You cannot change it. You must obey it. Are you hear what I'm saying? So in heaven, when we begin to rule, man, I'm going to ask Jesus, let me make this rule over Satan. I'm going to tell him where to go. And his demons. And the principalities. And the power of darkness. And the warlock. And the witches. And his agents. And those that are working for him. Do you know we're going to rule them? I, I don't know about you. And you, and you. When I do deliver, I remind the devil. So your days are numbered. Your days are numbered. Watch this. We're going to judge you. Me, I'm going to judge you. Me and Jesus, we're going to judge you. You stinking devil. Hallelujah. We're going to judge them. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. You are a ruler. You are a king. He is the king of kings. Oh, I feel like dancing. I feel like praising God. Hey. Come on, dance like a king. Dance like a ruler. I got to stop. so powerful church to see all the four things that is resurrection accomplished the first he restores back to the father because if you are not restored you cannot rule with him restoration fellowship glory to God so powerful number two implanted Do you know you have that? Resurrection life of Jesus is already in you. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's already there. And number three, he returned us to eternity in the presence of God. Number four, I love everything, but I love number one. Sit with Jesus. It's permitted. It's already done. You know, that's what the Bible says. We are seated in the past tense. It's already done. That's why it's easy. We are seated with him to rule the whole world. Amen. Imagine. You know, I'm into deliverance ministry. I said to myself, those demons I fought. Just them. Guess what? We don't need to wait for them. Ask a head to lay head to head. You can do it now. Because it gives us authority. Church, may the Lord bless you. Can we stand on our feet? Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come on, let's stand. Let's stand. Before, let us stand. We almost finish. At the end of the service, we'll be going to uh, I'll put the address on the screen where to fellowship, fellowship all. We want you all to join us. Let us stand. I cannot preach a message of resurrection without giving anyone to give someone opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The only way we will rule, the only way Resurrection life is implanted in us if we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Is there anyone here that wants to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Let me see your hand. I want to pray with you briefly. Let me see your hand. Want to receive Jesus into your life so we can have the implant. Spirit. 
in your body, your mother body. Don't you see anyone that don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or don't be ashamed. We are excited when you give your life to Jesus. Anyone that is just see your hand? We are praying. Anyone? 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 So everyone is saved. Glory to God. Anyone? I wait for you. I will not rush anyone. Or anyone wants to dedicate their life to God. Amen. To pray that prayer and take this work with God serious. Anyone? When you see your hand, I will pray for you. There's no one. Good. But we will do this. Let's pray this prayer together. Is that okay? Let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, everybody, let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God and you have died for my sin. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Today, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin and restore my soul and lead me in the path of righteousness. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin, known and unknown. I ask you to forgive me. Lord Jesus, I ask you today to come into my heart to stay. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Lord Jesus, give me your spirit and give me your power. Lord Jesus, I thank you. In your name I pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Come on, everybody shout amen. Everybody shout amen. Okay, let me ask you, if you are praying this prayer for the first time, let me see your hand. For the first time, first time, first time. Okay, great. We are good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I believe that salvation and healing are twins. I truly believe that. Salvation first, then healing. The Bible says, He bore our pain and He carried our sorrows, and by His strife, we are healed. You don't need to come to the altar. Is anyone trusting God for healing? Let me see your hand. Healing, I see a hand, I see a hand, I see a hand. Just lift your hands up if you are trusting God for healing. I see the hand, I see the hand, I see the hand. I see that hand. Amen. I'm going to pray for you where you are. Is that no? I'm going to pray for you where you are. I truly believe God will touch you. Amen. I am not the healer. He is the healer. Amen. He told the disciple, you know what he told them? He said, it's better for me to go. It's better. They don't want him to go. It's better for me to go. You know why? what he told them? He said, if I stay, I'm limited. We are limited in this body. It's like a trap. For him. He said, I'm limited. He said, but when I go, I will send a comforter. Oh, I love it. I will send a what? A comforter. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is everywhere. When Jesus was on the face of the earth, he can only be in one place at one time. But Holy Spirit is everywhere. Everywhere. It's right here now. It's in your house. Amen. That's why this God is too good. He's everywhere. He's for you. He's with you and for you. He's here with you and fighting for you. God is everywhere. He says, it's better for me to go. So I'm going to a comforter. I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. Those that are trusting God for healing. And I truly believe God will touch you. God will heal you. Take away sickness. And whatever it is, it will take him away. Amen. Come on, lift your hands forever. Yes. She told me, she shared, she shared it with me last week in night blindness. Yeah. Oh, really? You need to hear that. You know why? We overcame by the what? By the blood of the Lamb and by what? By the war of our? I didn't know you have that. Hallelujah. I was um, experiencing night blindness when I was driving at night. I could not see. I remember I went to Virginia one night and I was coming home and I was trying to look at the signs because I didn't know where I was going and I couldn't see it. 
and I prayed all the way to get home, and God took me home. I remember one night I was going to rehearsal, could not see. I was just, I couldn't see. I was just praying all the way to rehearsal. On my way back home, I could not see. I was praying all the way back. So I came to church, and I said, Dad, could you pray for me because I'm experiencing night blindness? And ever since that day, Dad prayed for me, it's all gone. Come on, let's give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Even if you have night blindness, it's going to go today in Jesus' name. Or any kind of blindness must go. Sickness must go. In the name of Jesus. Because your body is what is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me pray for you. Lift up your hands to heaven and receive from God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for 39 stripes that you took on the cross. Before he get on the cross, on your back, 39, you paid the price for all the sicknesses on earth. Father, in the name of Jesus, and the word said that you, are, you bought our pain, you carry our sorrows, and by your stripes we were healed. Father, I thank you because it is done. You paid the price for it. Right now, today, I'm just praying and thanking God for what you have done and executing the victory that you are giving to us, executing the healing that you've already paid the price for. So today, in the name of Jesus Christ, first of all, a bind spirit of infirmity because we know that every sicknesses are under spirit of infirmity. So you spirit of infirmity are Find you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command pain to go in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. As I pray, shout amen. I pray for sickness to go in the name of Jesus. I pray for high blood pressure to go in the name of Jesus. I pray for diabetes to go in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and command cancer to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every other form of sickness. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Sickness, I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to go and never return in the mighty name of Jesus. Because Jesus has paid the price for our healing, for our deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Now begin to go back your Lord and go. You know, even with all the symptoms that there remnant I command you. I take authority and I take dominion in the name of Jesus. And I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Now I release the healing power of Jesus. I release the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to take them away. To begin to heal you. To begin to deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. I give you praise and I give you glory. If you believe, shout a loud amen. Shout a loud amen. Shout a loud amen. Shout a loud amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you. I'm getting something in the spirit. Thank you. Can I pray for Financial breakthrough. I see a few people. Say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. I declare with my mouth that unexpected, unexpected financial miracle, financial breakthrough to come to me now in the name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth so shall it be. The Bible says, we shall declare a thing, it shall be established. So I declare with my mouth, expected and unexpected financial miracle, come to me by fire now. Come to me by fire now. Come to me by fire now. Opportunities, come to me right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Come on. Somebody shout it. Shout amen. Shout amen. It is done. 
I, I declare you begin to see manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. We're going to take that and offering. Uh, do we have communion yet? Do we have enough? Do we have enough? Okay. Let's do that. Let's, let's do communion first. Please. Let's do that first. Is that okay, church? Don't go yet. Let's do communion first. Then we're going to do our tithe and offering. It's very powerful. A day like today is to remember the cross. To remember the cross as often as you do it. We do it in remembrance of him. In remembrance of him. In remembrance of him. Amen. We're going to do communion. It's very important. Do communion. The Bible says as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of him. Remember what Jesus did on the cross. We're going to do that. And after, we will take tithe and offering. Amen. We do tithe and offering. The bread, you all know, the bread symbolized the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken. That was broken. And the blood, the cup symbolized the blood that was shed. The blood that was shed. The Bible says, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance how many remember what Jesus did? I can never forget. We can never forget. We do it often. Often as we will do it. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. Our minister, our pastor, our teacher. There are five purposes that we share in this ministry. Number one, we look where? Backward. We look backward. Why are we looking backward? To 2,000 years ago, what he did. To look backward to remember. To look backward to remember what Jesus did on the cross. To look backward to remember. Then we look all upward to do what? To thank God. Amen. To thank God why? For sending the Lamb of God. Perfect Lamb of God. Yes, ago somebody asked me, how come you send an angel? I said, that time angel did sin. Adam sin. And the Bible says, he made him like his brethren. Like his brethren. He said, man supposed to pay the price, not an angel. So we look upward and thank God. We will thank God for what? For sending the perfect lamb of God. Amen. How many are thankful for God sending the lamb of God? Amen. Perfect Lamb of God in this season. He sent Jesus to come and pay the price for all. The Bible says, in due time, in due time, he came. So what we do, we look upward. First, we look backward to what? Remember. Then we look where? Upward to do what? To give thanks to God. To give thanks to God. Number three, we look where? Inward. To amend ourselves. To examine and I'm sorry, sometimes we're so quick to examine others. Can I talk to you, church? We're so quick to say, do this, you, 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 uh. The Bible says, examine ourselves. Are we standing uprightly with God? Don't point finger, please. Never judge anyone. Amen. Jesus said something one time in the scripture. He said, you know, he said, your brother has a, 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 a you know, he has a fetch. In your heart, you have a what? A plank. So I said to myself, maybe because of the plank, that's why you don't know what's there. <laughs> Amen. Please do not judge, don't point finger to others. Amen. Let's examine ourselves first. Amen. So we look inward. Am I standing up and with God? God forgive me what I have done. I must stop coming what I have done. What I love, even if you have done anything, go back. And ask for forgiveness. I like that song. We are under the blood. Amen. Propitiation. When God looks at you, don't see you. He see the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we look inward to examine ourselves. Number three. Number four. We look around. God is good for we partake of the communion to forgive everybody. Amen. Everybody. 
bad is that I've heard us. Do you know for me to sin is that? For you. It's for you. No. I mean, no, it's coming soon. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'll take communion. Let me tell you something. Do you know why God didn't give us date and time and year that Jesus is coming? Do you know why? Because if you know why, a lot of you won't come to church. Because you know the date. So five minutes before you come, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Honest. You will never, and I will stop. Honest, I know we have a lot to do today. But you will never know when it's coming. Even Jesus said, I don't know. Even the angels in heaven don't know. Only God. Do you know why? I'll teach you that another time. Say faithfulness. God wants us to be faithful from the beginning to the end. Faithfulness with God. Because if you know the date is coming, December 31st at midnight. Probably I'll be preaching to the chair. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Let's pray for me. I'm sorry. No, it's the truth. It's the truth. Time to come, we will talk about that. It's the truth. Let's take the bread, symbolize the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for men. His body was broken for men. Let's take the bread. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body that was broken. Thank you and we bless you. We also understand the impartation of your body. The impartation is healing and some other things. So we thank you for your body. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Let's break it. Let's partake. Let's take the cup. Symbolize the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the, in the blood. In the blood. And Jesus shed his blood. Let's lift it up. Let's give thanks to Jesus for coming, for dying on the cross. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Now you may partake. The Bible says as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We will take our offering and dismiss by the way. Amen. We're going to take offering. The moment we dismiss, we will displace the address where we're going to be. Uh, we're going to be fellowshipping. We want you to come with us. Amen. Amen. Time to give. Are we ready to give? Amen. Glory to God. If you need an envelope, please lift up your hands. Our usher will give you an envelope. Also, wait to grief. Give. Can we put that on the screen? Wait to give on the screen. You can give to our cash app. It's on the screen. Dollar sign everlasting life dot everlasting life cc also website everlasting life dot org slash give also paypal and zell in the same email address finance at everlasting life dot org and if you need envelope, let me see your hands. If you need envelope, uh, envelope here. 
envelope. Also for the members, the resurrection seed, if you have your seed as well. If you have your seed, put that in my hand and I'll put it in the basket. Resurrection seed, if you have that, we all need to do that on resurrection. Amen. Just showing our gratitude to what Jesus done so that his work can continue on earth. Amen. Resurrection seed. It is, Jesus said it is blessed to give than to receive. One thing, there's a principle of God when you give, you receive. I mean, know that. When you give, it's a guarantee. Receive. God is faithful. Amen. And as you continue to give, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that opportunities, blessings of God will come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will not be limited to spiritual blessings. I pray that spiritual blessing will come first. Come on, how many say amen? Come on, how many say amen? Spiritual blessing will come first. Amen. I know sometimes we want money first, but. <laughs> it won't manifest. Yes. Just a, 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 just a great testimony. Um, Light day. Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, I, I, she was home, I believe she was. I don't know where she was, but she got the phone call. And, and um, God says, there is a business that you're doing that you need prayer for. Glory to God. And she came. She, she came. She didn't, she didn't hesitate. She came. But, but it was a whole lot of people, and she said, you know what, I left. But then she called back for prayer. I said, that's right. What she said, I want the Jesus. I want the Jesus factor. I teaching a series on the power of agreement. I mean, remember that. The power of agreement, that tells me that she was really, really listening to that message. When she called me, she said, Pastor, please, you know. I said, I was driving. You know where? Uh, pray, I want Jesus factor. That's how she put it. You want Jesus factor. Great is your faith. I didn't get the chance to tell you that. He said, I want Jesus factor. Remember in that teaching? We say when Jesus said, when two or three touch and agree concerning anything, Jesus said, I am in the midst. Amen. When Jesus is in the midst, he's not sitting. It's active. I like how she put it. I want Jesus factor. I was excited. Even when I was driving a pack on the side, I was excited. I she put it, Jesus factor. It means to touch Anna, pray. And I pray with her. And a few days later, she called. What she was trusting God for happened. Came to pass. Came to pass. Actually, she's starting, she hopes starting a new business. She gave the certificate, everything that she needed. Jesus factor. Come on. Jesus what? Factor. It's not pastor's factor. It's who? Jesus factor. I like that. After the service with this meeting, if you want Jesus factor, come. I'll touch and agree with you. Amen. Jesus factor. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what he said. This is the house where God dwells. Matter of fact, right now, Charnay is uh, on campus and some things miraculous happen for her even when the, 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 the head of the, the whole entire uh, uh, um, um, place says no, 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 you, 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 you pass time, you, you're out of time and all of that. Glory to God. She received prayer. Hallelujah. And she went back. We agreed. We prayed. Oh my God. She stayed on my phone. Lord Jesus, an entire day. Where, where is she? Hallelujah. She stayed on my phone an entire day. Glory to God. She called me. She says, okay. This one said no. Then she went to somebody else and they're like, mm, no, over time. I said, no, we're going to pray. You go back. Glory to God. She prayed and went back and everything that she was believing God for, glory to God, Hallelujah. she received. Amen. 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 Jesus factor. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We touch and agree. Glory to God. So if you stand with us, please. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, King of glory, we thank you. We thank you, but my God, we thank you because, hallelujah, you've, you've said from, from so many years ago that this is the house where God dwells. dwells. You have even said, glory to God, that this is good soil, my God. 
in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you that because your spirit is here, that's what's made the, the, the soil rich. Because your power is here, that's what's made the soil rich. My God, in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I ask, let there be manifestation. Let there be testimonies. Glory to God. As your people come and adhere to your word in this soil. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And let there be Jesus factor. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let the rest remain and abide with you now in Jesus mighty name. And the church will shout Amen. Amen.